So today I want to cover all the different effects that fasting can create on your body. I've done a lot of videos, but I wanted to create one video, especially for someone new to fasting, so you can see how powerful fasting is for the entire body. So let's start with your brain. The first thing that fasting will help you with is it will help you stimulate something called BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. You can look at this as miracle growth for the brain. It basically helps to repair and regenerate neurons. Yeah. You would think if you stopped eating, your brain cells would die. No, they thrive. It's increasing stress resistance. So your brain becomes resistant to stress, so it can handle more stress. Interesting. Increased neurogenesis, which actually is part of this right here. So you're generating the growth of more neurons and nerve cells and nerve support cells. Especially if there's damage, if you have Alzheimer's, um, Parkinson's, this is very, very important. Then we have the production of more mitochondria. Mitochondria is the energy factories in all the cells, including your brain. So if these guys work right here, you're going to have memory, you're going to be able to focus, you're going to have better cognitive function. Fasting helps improve the number of mitochondria in the brain. Also, it decreases inflammation. And I don't even need to get into that because I think most people understand how deadly inflammation is on the different parts of the body. But there's probably nothing more powerful than fasting to handle inflammation. Okay, there's more things that fasting will do, but I think that's a good summary. Now, the liver. The first thing that fasting will help you with is making insulin more sensitive, which is going to help blood sugars, prediabetes, diabetes. Most people have insulin resistance, and so insulin doesn't work that well. Fasting helps make insulin work. So your blood sugars are going to do better. Your absorption of nutrients are going to do better. Also, fasting helps in the detoxification process. Um, both detoxification of the phase one, phase two enzymes to take poisonous chemicals and turn them into water-soluble, harmless particles, as well as stimulating something called autophagy, which is your cell's recycling mechanism to take damaged cells and make them new again. Fasting helps increase your antioxidant network. Also, fasting is amazing to reduce a fatty liver, to take the fat in the liver and use that for energy and clear out the fat on the liver thereby increasing the function of the liver in the detoxification of hormones, its metabolism of, of food, in the storage of vitamins, in the production of bile. The list goes on and on and on. Fasting helps decrease inflammation in the liver as well, as in conditions like hepatitis. If you're going to decrease inflammation, you're also going to decrease fibrosis. That's scar tissue, and fibrosis turns into cirrhosis. And then we get to the gut, okay? We're talking about the small intestine and the large intestine. Fasting increases the diversity of microbes in your gut. Apparently, that stress causes this survival mechanism of different types of microbes growing, which is fascinating. Fasting decreases inflammation in the gut, and there's a lot of conditions that involve inflammation. Also, it decreases SIBO, very, very important. I'll put a link down below for more information on that if you haven't heard that uh, video. Also, it fasting helps make your microbiome, your friendly bacteria, live longer. Okay, then let's talk about the immune system. Huge effects. Fasting will actually help you become immune to pathogens because the white blood cells increase in strength and size and in their weaponry to kill off pathogens. Periodic prolonged fasting, like 72 hours, can increase stem cells in your immune system. So you're basically growing a new immune system. Now, the fasting effect on the pancreas is huge because if you think about it, when you're eating, you're constantly triggering insulin all the time, especially when you're snacking. So that's creating damage in little cells that make insulin. It's in the pancreas. Well, when you fast, you reverse the flow and you give the cells that make insulin a chance to heal and rejuvenate. So you start to 
develop insulin sensitivity. Insulin starts working better. That's why if you're a pre-diabetic, if you're a diabetic, it's essential that you do intermittent fasting. Fasting is going to help your blood sugars. Then we get to the fat cell. Fasting stimulates lipolysis, basically the breakdown of fat. Okay, so we get rid of the fat cells. If they're too big, if they're too stuffed, they reduce in size. And you start generating ketones. So you turn this into ketones, which can be used for energy. Your brain loves ketones. You get more energy from ketones. You improve the insulin resistant situation. So if you're resistant to insulin, that condition improves. In fact, fasting is the thing that creates a faster metabolism, which is very different than starving or some low calorie diet. I'll put a link down below for more information on that because I just did a video on that. Very interesting. Okay, leptin. It decreases leptin. So you're going to find that the, the uh, messages for hunger are going to go way down. Also, it reduces inflammation, which is going to help you in correcting insulin resistance. Okay, let's talk about the muscles. The first thing that's going to happen is insulin is going to become more sensitive, so it's going to work better. So because insulin is anabolic, which means you're going to actually be able to build up your muscles the more insulin works. You're also going to get protein sparing. So when you fast, the muscles go into a certain state where they stop breaking down. Okay, So it's going to help you uh, prevent protein loss from your muscles. Also increasing stress resistance. So your body just becomes overall um, stronger and more fit to survive. Then we get to the heart muscle. We increase more parasympathetic. Now, parasympathetic is the opposite of sympathetic, which is flight or fight, stress mode. So this is relaxation mode. When people do fasting, they feel calm, their heart relaxes, they're able to rest and digest better. Also, the heart rate comes down, and there's an increase in something called heart rate variability. Normally, you have these heartbeats that are supposed to be, on average, I'd say 72 beats per hour, right? Well, you would think in a healthy heart, you need the same amount of time for each beat, but that's not the case. The healthier the heart, the more erratic or the more variable the heartbeat should be because variability helps you in the adaptation of certain things and it's less rigid. So there's a test that you can do. I used to do it in my office that measures this and people with a very healthy heart would have a very high HRV and they would be able to handle a lot of stress because they have more parasympathetic and they have a, a huge recovery uh, backup system. The more rigid the heart is, the stiffer the arteries, the less variance you have between the heartbeats itself. Okay, less blood pressure because things are more elastic and increased stress resistance. So the heart becomes stronger to fight stress. So in summary, you can see that fasting creates some very cool effects. And I didn't get into the anti-cancer effects and there's many other effects, but at least this will convince you to try fasting yourself. Thanks for watching. Hey, we're back with another amazing recipe. No grains, no sugar, totally keto. There's no suffering in keto. Absolutely not, Karen. And it's an immune system builder. Absolutely. You have to check this out. I think you should hurry up, watch the recipe, and make it yourself. It's just so easy to be keto. But is it simple? It's super simple. We hope you enjoy making it as much as we are enjoying eating it.